guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 10, aka the Bottle Episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so I have a trailer breakdown out tomorrow. Sorry this video is out a bit late, but you know, I'm finally getting around to it. I watched the episode this morning, and... I really liked it. I thought it was a great episode going into the back half of the season. This is obviously the episode piggybacking off of, you know, the final few episodes of Crisis last week. And this episode was very much so a brainy centric episode and I enjoyed it a lot and I wasn't expecting some of the stuff that went down in the episode. Actually, a lot of the stuff was very out of sort of the blue. I did not know about it, but I thought that was a nice element to it because it was very unpredictable. And yeah, so anyway, let's go through this, talk about the stuff I liked, talk about everything that you guys need to know, and explain some stuff and break it down. So yeah, we get loads of Brainiac 5s in this episode, and this is due to a wormhole, and people from other Earths, other planets, have essentially ended up coming through this wormhole. As far as I can tell, it's a little bit convoluted as to exactly how they all ended up in the same area, but apart from that, they all show up here. And we have many versions of Brainiac 5. I think we had like four, maybe five, including ours. I could be wrong. I think it's one of those two numbers. And anyway, so one of them actually dies at the start. And you're like, what the hell? He sort of had this virus and he just dies. Just straight up dies. And so you later find out it's due to this one Brainy who actually has sort of malicious intent. Although he's trying to save his world, which he bottled in a planet exactly like Brainiac in the comics, you know, the evil version of Brainiac that you say have seen on Krypton, if you watch Krypton the TV show, you know that, you know, Brainiac's, he's a bad guy, and that's what he does, he bottles candor, he bottles all these cities, and he keeps them as sort of artifacts, and so that is obviously a big reference to the actual Brainy, but this version of Brainy, the bad one in this episode, isn't actually that bad in the end. He's doing it with good intent, but he's sort of clouded. And so yeah, we have all these Brainies going on, and I think Jesse Raff did a really good job this episode. Sometimes it was a little bit off, maybe I found a few of them a little bit annoying or sort of off-putting at times. But I guess that's because he was trying to play such different personalities for all these different versions. He had to play a lot of characters, but overall I think it worked very well. We had another version of Brainiac 5 who just happened to be Jesse Raff's sister, Megan Raff, she made an appearance. I guess the only reason they included her was because she's actually a sibling of Jesse, so that kind of makes sense. And so she's a new version of Brainiac 5 from somewhere else, and she seems to be very smart, and she's basically sort of loitering this whole time because she's actually looking into Lex as it's revealed later in the episode, and she warns Brainy that he has to work with Lex because she didn't work with Lex and on her earth or wherever she's from it didn't turn out for the best and she basically gave him some insight. And so obviously we start the episode after Crisis and if you've watched Crisis which you all should have by now you know go check out my review the other day if you want to go check that out after you've watched the episode. Earth 38 is no more and the Earths have been combined and it's now Earth Prime and one error in this episode that I caught, they mentioned that there was no other Earths out there anymore, that it's just this one Earth, but that's not true because in Crisis they showed all these different Earths, this new reality, you had like Earth 2 with Stargirl, you had different Earths with Green Lantern, Titans, Doom Patrol and such, they all exist still out there, so that was an error in this episode, maybe they just didn't know that they were going to include it and they filmed this episode before and you know, that was the dialogue, they were like, you know, all these Earths have been destroyed and now it's just, you know, Earth Prime. But, yeah, so that's a mistake on their behalf as far as I can tell. However, that doesn't matter. This is Earth Prime, this is the merged Earth between Earth 38 and 1, and presumably a few other Earths as well. However, due to this, there is obviously some change that goes on in terms of society and how people perceive everyone. So, Lex is perceived as a sort of hero of National City and I guess of America as well and he has a good relation standing with Supergirl but also Lena as well so things have changed for the best for Lex and 
he tries to definitely use that to his advantage and that's a very smart way to bring back Lex, you know, use Crisis to make sure Lex sticks around and Lex is going to be around for most of the season I guess and I'm excited for that. Obviously I wasn't expecting it but I think it was smart for them to reincorporate Lex into the story because he's he's very good. I love John Cryer as Lex. And so yeah, lots has changed. We have Leviathan basically not being remembered or you know there's not much details in this version of reality. I couldn't exactly crack down as to what was going on with Leviathan in terms of in this reality does anyone know about them? Do they properly exist or you know has everything changed so much that there is absolutely nothing on Leviathan like it seemed to be like Lex has actually suggested or have they just forgotten? I don't know. But also later in the story we get the incorporation of these people from other else and we get the return of Rain's makers and I have to say that was a major fanboy moment for me I really just kind of freaked I was like what the hell why are they back and it was just so cool to see I love season three as you know I think Rain is easily the best villain and I just got very nostalgic for season three and the stuff with Rain seeing Rain's makers. Also we know that Samantha Arias is returning in the 100th episode in two episodes time so that's good. We're getting all these callbacks and I really like it. And yeah so let's move on to the ending. I want to skip to the ending because this is massive. So there's this massive WTF ending cliffhanger with Lex talking to Brainy. We'll talk about what Brainy does in a second but we see a photo of Win shot Wynn is returning next episode, there is a trailer and I'm pretty damn sure, I haven't watched it yet but I've seen some stills, pretty damn sure Wynn is in that episode and you know the synopsis was released actually for episode 11 next episode so yeah he is in it. So that trailer breakdown should be coming out tomorrow so be on the lookout for that. But yeah, I got so hyped seeing Wynn just on my screen again, seeing Jeremy Jordan, it was just in a photo, he'd been arrested in this photo and it's a doppelganger. Seems like this version's probably going to be evil or he's going to be quite different. However, I do believe our version of Wynn's actually probably going to return as well. That's my theory as of right now, but this version is a doppelganger for now who came through one of those wormholes that everyone escapes from, you know, their planets and whatever went on there during Crisis. And basically Lex needs knowledge from the future to do with Leviathan. So Lex is really looking into this Leviathan stuff. We have Brainy actually teaming up with him due to the fact that, you know, Megan Raff's version of Brainy actually told him that you have to work with Lex. So that's what he's doing and in this process they need information from the future because in this version of reality basically nothing is known about Leviathan and he needs that information for himself because that is a big posing threat to him as well. And so Brainiac has these inhibitors and he has this whole story this episode of you know who he is what defines him essentially and he at the end takes off his inhibitors and he turns into a new version of Brainiac basically a really comic book accurate version of himself he gets a new suit it's really cool but most importantly he is green like Brainiac the evil version and lots of other Brainiacs we've had in the comics this is so exciting I got really hyped to see this because it's a very welcome change. I like how Brainy looked in the past, but it got a bit old, I'm not gonna lie, and I think this is very refreshing, and I think it was done in a really good way, sort of explaining why those things were on his head, and they were actually inhibitors to stop him from reaching the big brain, which they kept on repeating in the episode, so this is some sort of thing that all Brainiacs link to in the future, or, you know, wherever you're from. And so additionally we have Brainy, he breaks up with Nia due to him and his mission with Lex in the end. So that is collateral of that, but I reckon they'll get back together sometime very soon. We have Lex and Lena as well, they're working together. Also there is a teaser that their mum is going to be working with Lex very sort of closely but behind the scenes as well. That was towards the end of the episode. And we have a board member of Obsidian who is named Gemma Cooper who we've seen in the past, she works for Leviathan and I don't know what's going on with this version of reality as to if anyone knows that she works for Leviathan because I'm pretty damn sure that Akrata actually got a look at her in the past. So 
I don't know. Maybe this is the changing of reality. And so, also, Lena remembers all this was part of Lex's deal with the monitor, it seems like. And so that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers. We're about 200 subs away, so it would mean the world to me if you shared this video and subscribed if you are new around here. So I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see.